Good morning, everybody. Irish guy Jesse here with you. Um, I am going to be giving you a message today, and it's going to be a little different. Um, I'm going to actually be making messages here soon. I'm going to try and edit videos where I'm going to be the interviewer, and I'm going to be the interviewee. I'm going to be asking myself basically these questions. It's a it's a format that I think might work. It might bring some excitement to the channel, and it might bring a little bit of flavor, right? Because I know a lot of us have questions, but uh, I haven't been able to interview a whole lot of people, and I know uh, that I would like to ask some questions to myself too, and maybe bring about some some new some new info. Sorry. So here we go. We are in. We made it to step twelve, you guys. We worked our way all the way through the first step to the 12th step. And not only have we done that, but we were working them and I was working them personally as we went along. So I was working the eighth step when we were working the eighth step and, and there was some forgiveness and amends that had gotten made. And then, you know, here we are to the 12th step where we've had a, a spiritual awakening as a result of working these steps. And we tried to carry this message to elder alcoholics and addicts and practice these principles in all of our affairs. Now, I had a tooth pulled yesterday, so forgive me if I slur or, or kind of do something weird. But uh, it, it's it's still it's still pretty touch and go. But I, I'm you guys, this is ten times better than what it could be. I'm blessed. So the joy of living in the theme of our our recovery is twelve steps, right? And the action is its keyword, right? Here we turn outward toward our other fellow alcoholics who are still in distress. And here we experience the kind of giving that, that, that asks no rewards. Here we begin to practice all the 12 steps of the program in our daily lives. And so that we and those about us may find emotional sobriety. Amen. So when the 12th step is seen in its full implication, it is really talking about the kind of love that has no price tag on it. Our 12th step also says that as a result of practicing all these steps, we have also found each step. We've also each found something called a spiritual awakening. To a new uh, member in this program, this often seems like a very dubious and improbable state of affairs. What do you mean when you talk about a spiritual awakening, they ask? All right, everybody. Today, we're going to be working uh, a lesson. And I want to work this lesson. It's called, There is no will but God's will. The idea for today can be regarded as a central thought toward all our exercises are directed. God is the only will. When you have recognized this, you have recognized that your will is his. The belief that conflict is possible has gone. Peace has replaced the strange idea that you are torn by conflicting goals. As an expression of the will of God, you have no excuse me, you have no goal but his. There is great peace in today's idea and the exercises for today are directed towards finding it. The idea itself is wholly true, therefore it cannot give rise to illusions. Therefore Without illusions, conflict is impossible. So let's try to recognize this today and experience the peace and the recognition that it brings. So begin this longer practice period by repeating these thoughts several times, slowly and with firm determination to understand what they mean and to hold them in mind. There is no will but God's. I cannot be in conflict. Spend several minutes adding some of these related thoughts. I am at peace. Nothing can disturb me. My will is God's will. My will and God's are one. My God's will for me is peace. God's will, God's wills, God wills peace for his son. There is no will but God's. These conflict thoughts are meaningless. So if there is one conflict area that seems particularly difficult to resolve when we're working our 12th step, we're finally in our 12th step, you guys. But single it out for special consideration and think about it briefly, but very specifically, okay? Identify the particular person or persons or situations or situations involved and tell yourself, there is no God's will but God. Sorry, there is no will but God's will. I share it with him. My conflicts about blank cannot be real. After you have cleared your mind this way, close your eyes and try to experience the peace to which your reality entitles you. Meditate on this peace. Sink into it and feel it closing around you. There may be some temptation to mistake these attempts for withdrawal, but the difference is easily detected. If you are succeeding, you will feel a deep sense of joy and an increased alertness rather than a feeling of drowsiness or innervation. Joy characterizes peace. By this experience, you will recognize that you have reached it. If you feel yourself sipping into, off, into withdrawal, quickly repeat the idea for today and try again. Do this as often as necessary. 
There is definite gain in refusing to allow to retreat into withdrawal, even if you do not experience the peace you seek. So in these shorter periods, which should be undertaken at regular and predetermined intervals during the day, say to yourself, there is no will but God's will. I seek his peace today. Then try to find what you are seeking. A minute or two every half hour with eyes closed, if possible, will be well spent on this today. Please, my brothers and sisters, take this message and run with it. Have hope, be determined, and spend some time learning that there is no will but God's will. God bless you guys.